Hello and welcome to this episode of The Unnoticed Entrepreneur with me here, Jim James. I have Tom Dennis, who's in a place called Colchester in Essex in uh, the UK. Tom, welcome to the show. Thank you, Jim. It's great to be with you. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> well, it's my pleasure because you're going to address an issue that faces really all leaders at some stage. I know it's affected me, leading through the void, that moment when you kind of lose touch with why you're doing things and uh, it gets harder and harder to, to lead and to communicate the vision for the business. So, Tom, you've got over 30 years of organizational change. You've got 17 years in the Royal Marines as well. So you're a man of great wisdom and experience. Tell us about leading through the void. What What is it and why would people want to attend? Well, uh, Jim, thank you for asking. It, it's um, It's a retreat. It's a five-day retreat that we're going to run in a, a place which is of um, mutual excitement, I think, because you've you've actually been there unusually. Um, it's on the the uh, the shores of Lake Atitlan, surrounded by, I think, six volcanoes, in a in a in a beautiful um, uh, retreat center. And yeah. the the idea is that. Um, there's there's lots of very successful people out there, but uh, there's a, there's really a, a a question about what what is success, and um, when when people have really driven and been entrepreneurial and and created an organization, there's often a moment that arrives where they need to take a step back and say, well. Am I the best leader for this organization now? And what is it that's driving me? It's it's fascinating how often, uh, as a coach, I've had this this conversation with leaders, and it's almost always, not always, but it's very often coincided with the children leaving home, and and there's this this kind of psych crisis that takes place internally in in in, in people. And saying, what, what what is this about? Um, you know, I, I've, I've I've been a parent and I've been the leader of, of the, the the organization, but where do I go from here? Uh, and so, leading through the void is is a is an opportunity for people to come and just explore themselves and and begin to ask themselves, what 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 is this? Uh, and and. Uh, uh, um, the, you know, the void is that place from within where th these drivers come from, but we don't really address them. We don't understand them. You know, I, I think very often, uh, you know, you go into for, for a lot of people, you know, they work all day, they go home, and the first thing they do is switch on the television or they switch on the music. And it's like we can't, we've got to a stage where it's very difficult to be in silence. And uh, I think the, one of the things that we really sort of try and help leaders do is to hear that inner voice because the inner voice speaks very quietly. And unless you give it the space, you don't hear it. So uh, it, it, it's like we're being driven and we don't really understand how or why. And we're going to give people the space to, to really explore and understand themselves. And for organizations that send people on a, on a th program like that, they're going to get back a better leader, somebody who's much more self-aware. And it, in my estimation, that is the most important skill for leaders for the future, is that a deeper level of self-awareness. I love that, Tom. And yet Lake Atitlan, for those people that um, aren't aware, is in Guatemala, in, in Central America. And yet, thanks for referring that, I, referencing, I went there in 1989, a little while ago, uh, on my own personal sort of journey through Central America. Tom, let's just back up just a little bit. Um, why would someone not want to address this issue? Because as you say, most of us, especially as we get to our 50s, start to really question maybe what we've done so far, but also what we're going to do in the future. Why do you think people don't want to tackle that issue? Let's just talk about that for a moment if we can. It's a very interesting question. I, I, I think, honestly, it's kind of scary. Um, I, it, for a lot of us, 
our characters have been formed from a very early age to conform to other people's expectations. It could have been your parents, it could have been your grandparents, it could have been um, a, a very influential teacher at school, or um, a, a role model that you found outside. But somebody or some few people have created this sort of frame within which some people live their entire lives. And and actually, I think for a lot of people, that's what a midlife crisis is, <laughs> is, is actually saying, I have been in this 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 frame which actually in, in, is a kind of prison actually uh and i remember working with um prisoners uh, years ago uh, at a couple of cat category a uh, prisons when i was um taking it was part of a team taking sort of healing modalities into prisons and one of the things that so struck me was how terrified a lot of prisoners were about going outside into the outside world because they had been so institutionalized. And there is a parallel there, you know. Um, we, we drive and we, we, we use all our energy to create whatever it is. And a lot of entrepreneurs, I mean, they, you need to be really driven. My goodness, it's, it's, it's hard work. Um, but all of a sudden it's, what is this about? Um, and, and, you know, I, I talk about purpose, personal purpose, organizational purpose. And I think that sometimes people get stuck in a particular view of a purpose, which is theirs. But I, I actually witness people, uh, whose purpose morphs. It changes as you develop, as you come to different phases in your life, you have different challenges in your life. And so, um, getting a sense of actually what is driving me? What is my purpose? What do I want to achieve now? I've been successful. So where, where, what does that mean? Where do I go from here? Um, yeah. And those are all the topics that you're going to be covering on this retreat. And you, you've got a background for over 30 years, Tom, of organizational change and with your experience in the armed forces in the Royal Marines, you've gone into as you say, to prisons, which is uh, amazing work as well to be doing. How does it impact an organization if the entrepreneur doesn't address this sort of fundamental driver that will motivate them and, and keep them, if you like, sincere and authentic over time throughout the organization? How does it impact organizations and, and how can we, if you like, try and avoid making those mistakes? Well, I can, I can take that at several levels. I, I, I mean, <clears throat> particularly in the banks, I've been called in a number of times. Um, you know, we've got this guy. It is normally a guy, um, you know, a, a, a man. Sometimes it's a woman, but mostly it's a, it's a man. He's really driven and he's getting great results, but his people live in fear. And, uh, what was acceptable as a management style is not anymore um, because as they say, it creates too much noise. There's always noise around this person and the, the organizations get into this sort of paradoxical bind of, we don't want to stop him because he's making loads of money for us, but actually he's damaging the people and they're beginning to leave. So uh, how do we do that? <laughs> so, you, you know, you call in the, the coach who tries to, help that individual. Um, so that's, that's a, 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 one level. I think that, um, you know, cultures, uh, organization culture is something that is, is changing all the time. Um, and I, I think what's interesting is that <clears throat> in the old days, or, uh, big organizations, institutions used to dictate what social culture was like. But I think things have changed now, and now it's 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 the social world that is putting lots of pressure on the organisations to change their cultures, uh, to to acknowledge what in the past they've kind of avoided, which is things like uh, well-being, mental health, 
um, the incorporation or the inclusion of all sorts of different people. All these are <clears throat> really important aspects today. And, and organizations that don't acknowledge that and don't work with those um, changes are suffering because people are leaving, you know, the great resignation. And, you know, that's one of the, the byproducts of COVID is that an awful lot of people have, have said, I've lived my life like this up until now. And actually, on reflection, I don't really like it. <laughs> I, I want to change. I want to work in a different environment. Uh, and th so there's this tension now developing between organizations that say, no, come back to work, and this is how you, things are done. And other organizations are saying, well, okay, let's, let's see what, how flexible we, we can be uh, and so on. But that calls for flexibility uh, of thinking and a willingness to accept that as a leader, the way I have led up until now is not necessarily appropriate for how I need to lead in the future. I need to learn new skills. And there aren't actually that many programs out there that are offering that. So that's what the retreat will do. But also we're, we're designing our own leadership program, which isn't quite ready yet, but it's going to be soon, where we're really going to help people um, know themselves in a much deeper way so that they can then lead other people. You know, people talk about the golden rule, treat other people as you would wish to be treated yourself. And that is such a myth. Uh, you know, it, it, it's becoming clearer and clearer now that you need to treat people the way that they want to be treated, not how you think they need to be treated, which is the way that you're comfortable. So that, 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 that requires a sophistication of thinking and approach and a, and a recognition that we're all different. And there's such a beauty in including everybody but in order to do that, you've got to create a, a space that is safe and welcoming for difference. And difference is difficult to manage. <laughs> well, and that leads to a very interesting question, Tom, as well, about how do you create an, organiz an organizational culture that is consistent to the outside world, you know, that represents for potential customers, partners, and employees, you know, a consistent and coherent framework, and yet is so inclusive and so flexible and so, uh, you know, able to change. How do you reconcile the need for structure with the need for lack of structure? Mm. <clears throat> I think it's, this is where, where purpose comes in. And uh, I, I think that I remember working with one multinational, um, well, it was pretty much a global company a while back. And um, I said, well, what's, what, what's your, uh, what, what, are, what does the world see of you? How do you, are you represented? And it was an organization that didn't sell to the public in any way. Um, it, it sold to other, you know, organizations that made things that, that, you know, and so the, the, the comment was, well, we don't have one and we don't need one. Uh, and then all of a sudden something happened and they were all on the, the, the front pages of all the newspapers. And so they, they got a, um, a, a representation, but it, it was completely out of control. Uh, and you know, this, this takes you into the whole conversations about risk management and, and, uh, um, how, how the world sees you and how, uh, that affects the way that they want to buy your products. You know, I did a podcast interview with, um, a guy who'd been very senior in, in Patagonia for six years. And it was the most amazing conversation about how, you know, because they have such a very public, persona uh everybody loves them and they love the the product but one of the things that enables them to do that is they are completely congruent throughout so in other words the way they present themselves to the outside world is exactly how they 
present themselves internally and how they live. And, and when you get that authenticity and that congruency, then, uh, actually people want to buy your product. It's, it's, it's kind of funny, but it, it stretches out. And I, I remember working with a, uh, well, with one organization some years ago where it was clear that they were, that their, 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 their PR arm was presenting them as one thing, which was amazing, but the internal culture was quite different and you get that dissonance. And when you have that, the people working in the organization, they recognize it. And the people who have to deal with the, on the phones, you know, when phone, people are phoning in and complaining, it's really hard because they can see that what the comp- how the company is behaving is just not the same as how they say they are. And people don't want to buy from places like that. You know, you can't carry on living a lie. It doesn't work. It doesn't work in any relationship and it doesn't work in a corporate relationship with the outside world. Very interesting. It needs to be this is a, a congruency between the ethos and the behavior, Tom. I think that's absolutely brilliant. Of course, and Patagonia is a great example because they have the whole company owned now, don't they? There's a share by the structure earth. by the employees. Yeah, by no, the it's, earth. No, and, it's, uh, it, they, and, it's, it's, uh, they, they have, they've given it to the earth. So nobody owns it. And that, and it costs them a fortune in tax in order to do that. But, um, you know, even Sri now and, and his family said, no, that, that we want, we don't want anyone to control it. We don't want any shareholders telling us what to do. We don't want to be beholden because what we're doing, we truly absolutely believe in. Uh, they're, they are role models for so many organizations to follow, <laughs> but it's a challenge. My goodness. Yeah. That, but as you say, that, that alignment between purpose and, and action is felt by the people within the organization, isn't it, as well? So, Tom, you, you'd been an entrepreneur for 30 years. Uh, you are in coaching back in the early 90s before we even had terms for coaching, really. Um, how have you as an entrepreneur and as a coach managed to build your own personal brand? Um, because – Plainly, there's a huge amount of wisdom and, and authenticity in what you're doing. But how have you shared that to get noticed? Mm. It's very interesting. I, I, I mean, because the, the first company I, I set up was called Captain Tom. Uh, and that was in um, homage to uh, um, the, the, the Bowie song. Um, uh, and, uh, it was my printers actually who called me Captain Tom and, uh, we had a, a Tom cat image. And then, um, I, th- I went through one of my huge personal transitions in, in 94. And I, I set up an organization that I called Phoenix Obsidian. And that was, that was about, um, having uh, the phoenix, which is a mythological bird, but it's very beautiful and it flies uh, high. It was a, it, it was a sort of thought of how do you uh, come come work with me, climb on my back, and we can then look uh, from a high level at what you're doing and where you're going. It was that sense of uh, getting a real view of 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 the future and how you're going about things. And the obsidian was healing. Well, obsidian is volcanic glass and a lot of people use it for healing, but also it's a, it's a very grounding glass. So that there was that feeling. Now in mm, uh, 2016, I I was, I, I, that was a year when I did many retreats all over the world going inside because I, you know, I, I can't, tell leaders to go inside if I haven't done a bit of that myself. So I did a whole load of that. And out of that came this sense of serenity in leadership. And so Phoenix Obsidian was put to bed in a sense and, and, and serenity in leadership um, arose. And the idea there is that I, I often give the, 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 the image that was very strong for me. I, I, I was privileged enough to go down the Grand Canyon 
uh, rafting. Uh, and um, we had canoeists there uh, as well as the rafts. And before each of the rapids, which are photographs don't do it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's when you're on them, you think, yep. oh. yeah. and people die, you know, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not something to be take, taken lightly. So before each of the rapids, we used to get out and then recce it and see because the, the flow would always be different. So even for very experienced people, you, 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 you'd have to plot your route through the, the, um, the, 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 the rocks. Uh, uh, but when watching the canoeists go down, and actually it was the same for the, 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 the people guiding the rafts, in a sense, more so because you've got so little control. But when you, 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 you have to plot your entry route, right? And then once you're in the rapid, there's no going back. You can't start turning back. You, you, you're in it and the flow takes you. So all you can do is to, to make small adjustments as you go through to, 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 to steer through all the rocks. And th that is the metaphor for leadership for me, because they do that not from the brain, but from the gut, from the heart. You listen to the brain cells that we all have in our guts and our heart, which people are beginning to, you know, scientists are beginning to realize, which, you know, the ancient civilizations knew thousands of years ago, you know, we have this wisdom in our gut. And so you listen to that. And in order to, do, to be able to hear it, that it's a very small, still voice, as someone amazing once said. And you, in order to listen to that, you have to have that inner peace. That's serenity. So that's what this is about now, is how do we create leaders who have the inner serenity to hear their inner guidance? Because things are going so fast now that you don't have the time to uh, use your old structured thinking, you know, the old rules about leadership. They don't apply anymore. So we have to be very, I mean, people love the word agile. I mean, this is real agility, but it's agility that comes from within. Tom Dennis, thank you so much. And, and I guess the metaphor is that you do need to still get out of the raft, take a view at the rapids before getting back in. And that's really what you're leading the void program is going to help people to do, isn't it? Um, Absolutely. And I'm with you on the Colorado River. It's an amazing <laughs> rafting experience, isn't it? Um, <laughs> if we want to find out more about you, Tom Dennis, uh, you're a long way away from Colorado. You're just uh, in Essex, but you are going to Guatemala. How can people find out about you? Well, the the retreat is leadingthroughthevoid.com. Um, I'm on uh, LinkedIn. I spell my name Tom with an H, T-H-O-M. Dennis, D E W N I S. So find me on LinkedIn. I'd love to hear people's comments and thoughts and, and uh, responses or reactions to what we've been discussing. Um, and uh, the, the main website is serenityinleadership.com. And um, I write a lot of articles for uh, various publications. So look me up and comment, engage. And of course, I ha we have a YouTube channel and I'd love people to to uh, uh, subscribe there because it's jolly difficult getting subscribers, but we have some wonderful material and I love to share it. So thank you, Jim. <laughs> Tom, well, thank you. Uh, Tom, well, thank you for sharing. It's come across really the passion and, and the sincerity as well. Um, Tom Dennis, thanks for joining me today on the Unnoticed Entrepreneur Show. <laughs> it's been a great pleasure, Jim. Thank you. So I'm sure that you've been as inspired as I have been today by Tom's sharing. And I'll put, of course, the links to all those places he's mentioned in the show notes. And if you've enjoyed this or know an entrepreneur that you think might also enjoy learning from Tom and his wisdom, please do share this show. And just like Tom, I also would love you to review my show and it's also available on YouTube too. So until we meet again, just encourage you to keep on communicating. And thank you once again for listening.